What is up guys, welcome back to another Geeky Watt video and today I've got Corsair's brand new H100i Platinum in for review. Sitting at the top end of their AIO lineup, just how well does it stack up? Let's dive in and take a look. Now the first thing you'll notice about this cooler is just how good it looks. I'll be posting photos of this and loads of other insane PC components on my Instagram, so go and drop it a follow, it's at GeekyWatt. I'll also be giving away some Steam keys on my Insta stories as well. You do not want to miss out. Moving back to the cooler for now though, and you'll notice it doesn't stray too far design-wise from what we've seen from Corsair before, but they add RGB and addressable RGB at that. The CPU water block, for example, has got 16, you have me right, 16 individually programmable RGB uh, LEDs, which is phenomenal. And I'll cover the software side in more detail uh, later on. The radiator design is also nice uh, with a non-light up but sleek metallic Corsair logo on either side. Finally, Corsair include two of their addressable RGB HD120 fans, uh, which are super duper quiet. They rate them around 37 decibels and spin up to 2400 RPM. I really must give Corsair some credit here. These fans are not only fantastic, but they're also the full fat versions that you can buy retail. Cooler Master, for example, tend to include a slightly stripped down version of their RGB fans on their AIO coolers, and it's nice to see it isn't the case here. Finally, the fans do have a zero RPM mode, which turns them off completely when CPU temperatures are low enough to keep noise output to a bare minimum, which is a really neat feature. Now, all of these features and functionality do, of course, come in at a price. 125 and 139 pounds for the 240 mil and 280 mil H100i and H135i uh, variant uh, does price this unit slightly above the Cooler Master ML240R or Deep Cool Castle 240 at around the 100, 110 pounds and dollars mark. Though links will be in the description below for the latest and most up to date pricing. I'd actually argue that the price premium here is worth paying, especially when you then look at uh, the new AIOs from Asus with the uh, OLED water blocks and even Thermal Takes Ring series. This then doesn't seem like quite such a bad deal, but it's worth checking for offers and promotions and that kind of thing as prices do fluctuate over time. Moving on to the installation process of this cooler, and it's another area in which Corsair seem to excel. The completely toolless process is simple and easy to follow with fantastic, clear instructions. It's probably the easiest all-in-one liquid cooler I have ever installed, so massive props to Corsair here. Another area in which Corsair deserve massive props is in their proprietary software suite, which I'll cover more in a moment's time. First though, you're all probably chomping at the bit, to find out just how well this AIO cooler performs. So let's look at some benchmark figures and then we'll jump back to the software side. I use my standard test setup of an AMD Ryzen 7 2700 in a fairly well ventilated Corsair H500 case. Now I appreciate this cooler is rated for much higher wattage TDP CPUs and I'll be pairing it with a Core i9 in a build soon to so get subscribed for that one. Back to the Ryzen 7 chip though, and temperatures topped out at 41 degrees Celsius, which is notably 5 degrees Celsius cooler than the closest Cooler Master uh, counterpart. If you check out the link here in the card section, I'll be adding more and more coolers as I test them for a wider field of comparison, but all in all, really quite impressive. I also found the cooler was very quick to get the CPU back down to the high 20s, low 30 temperatures, which is also really nice to see. Moving back to the software side of things, and this is where Corsair really impressed me, but there is one massive caveat to keep in mind. Corsair use a proprietary RGB ecosystem that means they don't use the universal connector uh, that's been embraced by Acer's, Cooler Master, Deepcool, MSI, and even to an extent like Thermal Take. This means that syncing it up with graphics cards or motherboards isn't really possible, except for a few supported MSI units. Now that has its advantages and drawbacks. If you're looking to add this into a system heavy on the universal standard, it probably isn't the best move. But if you're willing to buy into the Corsair ecosystem, you can get a much finer degree of control and wider range of RGB effects. 
The Corsair IQ software is simply fantastic. Not only can you create your own presets and modes, but you can cycle through a ton of different RGB options. You can then fine tune them, adjust individual addressable RGB LEDs, uh, tie your water block to represent your CPU temperature using a color based system. The functionality is near endless and tying it up with a Corsair case, memory and front case fans can create some absolutely stunning system aesthetics. You're also able to monitor and change your uh, fan RPM speeds and your water block speeds in there as well uh, to adjust based on your noise or temperature preferences. All in all, really, really nice. And the Corsair software for my first impressions is a pretty spot on one. Overall, for my first experience using a Corsair AIO, I have to say I am thoroughly impressed. This just seems strives ahead of any other AIO that I've tried on the market recently. I'm, I'm kind of lost for words and that doesn't happen very often. You pay a bit of a premium for some Corsair components, but in this case, it's well and truly worth it. I'll put a link to this in the description below if you'd like to buy it. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a big old like, get subscribed, and make sure that notification bell uh, is clearly sealed. As always though, we'll see you in the next Geekawatt video.